Hi everyone, today I want to share a card that I'm making for a swap I'm participating in, and we are using stamp sets from the new Occasions catalog. I am using the Humming Along stamp set. I love to color and do watercolor techniques and coloring techniques and blends and all that, so I thought that I would use this stamp set because it gives great opportunity for coloring, and I really think this bird is really cute, and I love the flower. So I'm going to go ahead and use this card. This stamp set. <laughs> and here's the card that I created. I wanted to use this new gingham paper because I'm really loving it. And some new celebration ribbon that matches the gingham paper. Another favorite from the Occasions catalog are the stitched rectangle framelit. Here is what they look like and you get so many sizes. And one of the interesting things about these framelits is that if you look closely maybe you can see the stitching is both on the inside and outside of the cut so that means for example on this one I used the third and fifth <laughs> largest stamp uh, frame so when I used the smaller one the stitching on the outside of the square is what's showing in my final piece but on this one the stitching on the inside of the cut area is showing so I've got stitching on both the inside and outside pieces of my frame which is really cute now when you're cutting that you're gonna get these little rectangles and then they have stitching on them too so I'm gonna hang on to them that was the inside here and that stitching is really cute. I'm going to hang on to these and I'm going to design a card using these little pieces for an upcoming uh, class or card buffet because I think these are really sweet and I just really love the balmy blue and the gingham balmy blue. So this is really fun. This is a larger one that I was trying to toy with what size I liked. It's really a really nice addition to our collection and I'm really happy that they came out with these. So anyway, the fifth and third largest are what made my frame. There you go. These are awesome. They're part of a bundle. You can get just the framelits and that's awesome because they're just really great and you can use them for anything as you can see. Um, but there's also a stamp set that goes with them that I can't see off the top of my head. Um, I think it's a birthday stamp set or something about, it's got a, maybe several occasions, but the so if you can grab them both, do so, because you get a discount on the bundle. But if you can only get one, get the framelits, because they're really awesome. Now, the Humming Along stamp set also has framelits that cut out the bird, the leaf, the flower. And then it also has a really pretty background um, die and a label that cuts out a really fancy, pretty label that cuts out these sentiments. And I really thought that I had the bundle, <laughs> but turns out I don't. I actually got this stamp set at the um, Stampin' Up! Onstage event in November, and I won it, and I didn't win the dies, I just won the stamp set, so I meant to buy the dies, and then later I forgot that I won it and didn't buy it, so I didn't get the dies. So now it's on my next order. But for my swap cards, I actually had to cut these out myself, <laughs> because it's the it's the stamp I signed up for and so I needed to use it and of course I didn't realize that I didn't have the dies until you know three days ago when I started making these but they're easy to cut out now I also didn't think about filming a video until I'd already gotten through coloring the what is this a hibiscus I'm not sure what that is I think it's a hibiscus but I'm not sure um, anyway if you know let me know <laughs> in my comments but I, I already finished coloring the nine that I needed so I stamped one more so that I could color that with you and I thought we would color one of the hummingbirds as well and I'm using stamping blends for my coloring I really love these markers I think they're just a wonderful addition to our color lineup and um, they keep coming out with more colors, so I'm using a new color for the spring catalog. It's the Balmy Blue and Mossy Meadow. Yeah. So we're going to go through some coloring te techniques with the blends and put together this little card right there. Now I stamped a bunch of hummingbirds and the flower in memento ink and you need to do that because if you use like stays on for example stays on is an alcohol based ink and these markers are alcohol based and what will happen is they'll bleed together because they're blends they're meant to blend with each other so you're going to get that black outline blending in as well you don't want that so you're going to need to use a memento ink and 
that's what I've done here. And I'm going to do this hibiscus really quickly. And I'm just going to do one petal of the hibiscus since I've already colored so many. And what I used here is Flirty Flamingo. So you've got a dark and a light Flirty Flamingo. And I wanted my hibiscus to not be fully colored in. I have a lot of white space here, as you can see. Now you can color it all the way in and make it a bright pink hibiscus. I wanted the white. I thought it would be a pretty variegated leaf. So how I got that look was I grabbed the dark Flirty Flamingo and you've got a brush tip and the little nib tip. For this one I used the little nib, I think it's called a bullet tip or a nib tip, I'm not sure. And I just did an outline. the dark. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. Sometimes I like to lay down an entire layer of the light, but because I'm not doing light in the center, I didn't do that this time. And then I'm going to use the same tip and I'm going to go in little circular motions along that harsh line that I created and blend it out with the lighter flirty flamingo. You're going to go on top of that dark color as well. So you're laying right on top of it and next to it to kind of blend it out. Now I have my white center, but that's a little harsh, and I wanted it to look a little softer. So look at this one here. They're a little softer um, variations in color. So I'm using my color lifter. Now the color lifter is often used to um, erase a mistake if you go off the line, for example, and you want to clean that up. And what you're really doing is pushing color and you can push it um, back into your line if you go outside of the line. So what we want to do here is we're going to push that color by just blending it in. So you're going to just take this color lifter and go along those harsh lines And we're not really erasing any color, but what we're doing is we're making it move. And we're going to fill in the center where I want it to be white. And it's softening the edges of what I just colored and kind of fading them out. See? I'll hold it a little closer so you can get a better view of that petal. So see how it's just kind of fuzzing out my lines a little bit. Now you can do that on, I like to do that on a background. If I want to have a background around a stamp, I'll put an edge of maybe balmy blue or something to make a sky and then I'll use the color lifter to fuzz it out so it kind of fades out in the background. So that is how I did that variegated petal. Now the leaves um, I'll just do one real quick so you can kind of get an idea. Sometimes when I do a full color, when I'm not trying to do this white variegated look, I will go over the entire thing in a light. So this is the light mossy meadow. And I'll get a good base layer down in mossy meadow. And then I grab my dark and I think where do I want that dark to be? and oftentimes you want that on a leaf to be along the veins. Okay, and then we're going to take the light again, this time the bullet, so I did the base coat in the brush tip, and now I'm going to use this bullet nib end in little circle motions and blend out that line that I made so it's less harsh and kind of turns more fuzzy. And then for the stem, I can take, maybe take the light and then add a little shadow, a little dark, dark highlight on one side. Okay. 
and then go over it again with the light. So I kind of go light, dark light um, when I do a full color. And then when I do something like this, I do a dark light and then color lifter. Now another fun thing you can do let's, on this hummingbird, for example, is you can have a color bleed into another, like this mossy meadow kind of bleeds into the gray, and I've got some blue bleeding into some smoky slate here on the feathers, on the tail. And I've even put some smoky slate dots right on top of the bird's uh, chest area. So I've got balmy blue with some speckling of smoky slate. So that's really fun. So let's color a hummingbird. So I've got Calypso Coral on the beak, and we're going to go ahead and color um, the chest area of the bird. I'm going to start with my light. And then I'm going to take the dark some dark areas. And adding dark to the edges kind of gives the, the bird a little more of a rounded look. He's less flat. And then I'm going to go back over my dark edges with the light. This time just kind of blending in that dark line into the light background. Now I added some speckling on top of that by just dotting. On top, let's give it a little bit more interest. So to do the green area, I use the light. I love using the brush end to do my base layer. I just kind of went over the area that I wanted to be the mossy meadow. And I didn't use a lot of the dark on this part. I just used a little bit at the crown of his head and I just kind of added some dark highlights. And now I'm going to go back just to soften those lines by adding light on top of that. Okay, so that's my mossy meadow. Now here I've got three different colors going on on the feathers. So I took my lightest color first, which is going to be the balmy blue light. I turn my paper around a lot. <laughs> and I'm going to go down one side of the feathers with the balmy blue light. And then I'm going to take Smoky Slate. Also the light. Make sure I've got the light. Nope, that's the dark. What did I do with the light? I'm kind of going on top of that balmy blue and next to it, just adding layers. And it's okay to put a different color on top of each other. It doesn't have to always just be light and dark of the same color. So this smoky slate is going right down on top of the balmy blue. I'm going to use that dark to add some highlights.
Okay, I think my bird is done. So then I just cut them out. <laughs> now, like I said, there is a die for this, and you know you can grab that die and save yourself a lot of time. I'll speed up the video while I cut. Okay, I've got a piece of the gingham paper cut to, I believe it's five. Oh, I'm gonna, yes, five by three and three quarters. And we're gonna go ahead and put that right down on the background. See how there's a large check on one side and a small check on the other? It's just such a great paper. And then I use some foam adhesive strips to glue down my frame. I use some liquid glue to attach the flower to the inside. And then I kind of laid out my bird. Now I wanted to make sure that the card can open and close and fit into an envelope. So I kind of placed him just so that his wing touches the end. Place your glue down right there. At the top, from the same stamp set, I used a one inch strip of Whisper White and I stamped the thank you on there. And that is going to go up top. And I'm using a celebration item. Now what that means is that with a $50 purchase, you get to choose something from the celebration catalog for free. And um, the ribbon is a good choice. It comes in five colors, the same five colors that the gingham paper comes in, by the way, which is balmy blue, lemon lime twist, calypso coral, highland heather, and what's the yellow? Daffodil delight. And you get all five colors of this organdy ribbon. It's really pretty. It ties really easily. It lays nice and flat, so it's not going to add a lot of bulk to your card. So it's going to be able to mail in the mail without a lot of extra postage or any extra postage. Kind of depends on how picky your mail is. So if you were to grab this humming along stamp set, you would not quite get the $50 needed to get the free ribbon. However, if you added the Humming Along stamp set and this beautiful gigam paper, you would get a free item. And then I think you should choose this beautiful ribbon. <laughs> so there's the outside. And then I like to add a little bit something to my inside. And what I did here is when I cut the gingham paper, I always have little strips left over, and so I added a little bit of a piece to the bottom just to give the inside of the card a little cuteness, which I like to do. And you could put that at the top or the bottom. And there you have it. There is my humming along card. I hope you like it. I hope the swap that people like it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I hope that you'll consider purchasing through me. I have a frequent buyer rewards program which gives you um, points and then as you fill up the tracking sheet, you can pick out a free stamp set when you've got it all filled up and that can be one of the hostess exclusives or it can be something from the catalog. There's a price limit on there but you can check there's tons to choose from, so I'm sure there's one that you don't already have. I love to share my host rewards with you, so that's what I'm basically doing. And I hope that you'll check out the Humming Along Stamp Set. Thanks so much for watching. Come back again. Bye.